Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be talking about care of the patient with a colostomy. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel. How can you do that? Like this video, you're gonna love it, so press that like button, that thumbs up button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Now, besides the audio lessons that I have on my uh, website, I also have uh, bookings on my website. I've started reviewing for the next generation NCLEX type questions where I go over the types of questions that you should expect, um, the type of content that you need to know uh, for your boards and how to answer those questions even if you don't know what the answer is. So be sure to go to my website, Nexus Nursing Institute, and you can all check out the audio lessons, but also you can see which days are available to book and those bookings go fast. So make sure you guys check that out. One more thing, don't forget, Almost daily, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social me media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, so please be sure to check me out there. Before we get started, I'd like to start off with a prayer. If you're not into that, no problem, just fast forward. If you are, close your eyes, bow your head, unless you're driving or operating heavy machinery. All right. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for your grace and mercy over us. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that you've given us to go over more nursing content, Lord. I pray for every single viewer that's watching or listening right now, whatever area of uh, their studies that they're struggling with. Lord, I ask that you please help them. I ask that you please help them adjust the things in their life that needs to be adjusting, adjusted so that they can study appropriately. Father God, if there are people in their lives that are acting as uh, distractors that really, you know, don't mean them any good. Father God, I ask that you remove them from their lives. Any obstacles that are in their way, that are in their path from them being successful. Lord, I ask that you please clear that path for them. I ask that you please help them to gain an understanding of the material covered, help them to think uh, critically and to make better clinical decisions. Father God, I want to say a special prayer over their support system, whether it's parents, best friend, family, friends, whoever that are supporting them, that are helping them, that are encouraging them by um, acts of kindness. Maybe they're babysitting or maybe they're just telling them not to give up, that they can do it. Lord, I ask that you please bless them as well. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given me to have a platform to go over nursing content. Who am I that you've given me this opportunity? But Lord, I tell you, uh, thank you. And I ask that you please speak through me, Father God, and let me never try to take the glory. Let me always uh, be clear about who it is that's responsible for all of that. And that is you. And I thank you. I praise your name and give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So let's get started. First question. Uh, the client's been experiencing cramping of the lower um, abdomen and they've noticed a gradual change in the bowel elimination pattern. So as a result of preparation for a barium enema, the client's instructed to take 60 milliliters of castor oil orally. Castor oil facilitates cleansing of the bowel primarily by one, softening the feces, two, lubricating the feces, three, increasing the volume of intestinal contents, or for irritating the nerve endings in the intestinal mucosa. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is four. Irritating the nerve endings in the intestinal mucosa. So what happens is when those nerve endings get irritated, guess what happens? It promotes evacuation of the bowel. And so feces is evacuated from um, the bowel. So four is the correct answer. You see choices one, two, and three, softening feces, lubricating feces, increasing volume of intestinal um, contents. Um, let me tell you what does that. I'm trying to remember the class of the medication. I can't remember, but basically like um, magnesium citrate, that would do something like that, right? But when we're talking about castor oil, number four is the correct answer choice. Next question. As part of the client's outpatient teaching plan, the nurse would instruct him to take which of the medications below after barium enema? One, laxative, two, emetic, three, antacid, or four, digestive. What do you guys think? And the correct answer, guys, is one, laxative. Why? We're trying to promote the evacuation of uh, that barium enema. Something important for you guys to know, barium enema 
it's very constipating, okay? And it can cause uh, fecal impaction and those types of problems. So you want to evacuate it from the person's system. And that's why we expect a laxative to be given, okay? And something else I want you to notice. So whenever you have a multiple choice question and you have no idea what the answer is, try to see if you see two or three of the choices have something in common and then the other one doesn't. Whichever one's the oddball that does not have something in common, choose that answer. Did you notice that choices three, four, uh, choose, excuse me, choices two, three, and four, all of them have to do with what? The upper GI tract. Choice number one, that laxative is what for what? That lower GI tract. So even if you didn't know what the answer was, if you were able to see a pattern of choice two, three, and four, you would have chosen the oddball would have been, which would have been um, answer choice number one, okay? The client scheduled for an abdominal perineal resection with permanent colostomy. Which of the following measures would most likely be included in the plan for the client's pre-op preparation? One, keep the client NPO for two days before surgery. Two, administer, you know, I can't pronounce, cannot, cantrex, okay? Uh, kenamycin the night before surgery. That's amino glycoside, by the way. Uh, three, inform the client the chest tubes will be in place after surgery. Or four, advise the client to limit activity. What do you choose? All right, so that antibiotic that I could not pronounce, Cantrex, that's the correct answer. Why? I want you to think about it. So if you go back to the question, it says that they're going to be getting um, abdominal abdominal resection with a permanent colostomy and what are we going to do pre-op abdominal resection okay so let's talk about this don't we know that um the bowels are full of what stool you're about to have surgery and so what you don't want is for that stool to be released in what is supposed to be a sterile environment. That can cause that patient to have sepsis. So you better expect, you better believe, pre-op, that patient's gonna be on antibiotics. We wanna be them on anti, we want them to be on antibiotics because number one, we want to decrease the amount of uh, bacteria and pathogens that are in, that, in uh, the bowels as much as possible, number one. And number two, because we know that this is a surgery that the patient's high risk for sepsis, which we don't want to happen. We want to make sure that they're on antibiotics. And no matter what the type of um, surgery is, I taught this to you all the time. If a patient's having surgery, regardless of the type of surgery they're getting, what are our three concerns? Them having a DVT, a pulmonary embolism, them bleeding out, and what? Infection regardless of the type of surgery. And it just so happens that this type of surgery, it, they're at way increased risk for infection. You better believe that not only are they gonna be on um, antibiotics, they're gonna be on big antibiotics. Antibiotics for serious situations and serious infections. And those are your amino glycosides. Amino glycosides are the big guns. We don't give amino glycosides for little willy nilly infections. We give amino glycosides for the big guns. Why? Because amino glycosides are very hard on your kidneys. They're very hard on your liver. So, and uh, um, th there are a lot of adverse effects that go with the amino glycosides. If you're interested about that, go watch my pharmacology video on amino glycosides. You'll learn everything you need to know about it. But anyway, the point is the correct answer is number two, preoperatively and even post-op, you expect that patient to be on the big guns on those type of antibiotics, okay? So that is the correct answer choice. Now, I want to go over the wrong answer choices. One, keeping the client NPO for two days before surgery. Not necessary. That patient's gonna be kept NPO about eight to 12 hours before surgery. And before their NPO, uh, when they're eating, they're going to be um, eating foods that are low in, uh, um, what's a, like low in roughage. They're not gonna be eating uh, res residue. That's what I'm looking for. They're gonna be eating low residue foods. But once they're NPO, they're gonna be NPO eight to 24 hours. There's no, you're gonna have that patient not eat for two days, for 48 hours, that's ridiculous. They're gonna be NPO for eight to 12 hours before surgery, not two days. Um, also, they'll be on laxatives and enemas because we're trying to what? Clean out that bowel. 
Choice number three, inform the client that chest tubes will be in place after surgery for what? What are we doing chest tubes for? That's not necessary. Four, advise the client to limit activity. Um, there's no reason for them to limit activity. Again, this question is asking a preoperatively before surgery, what do you expect? And you expect that patient to be on antibiotics. That's why no, uh, choice number two is the correct answer choice. The client asks, where will my colostomy be placed? What would be the nurse's best response? One, the surgeons will decide that during surgery. Two, it doesn't matter, you'll have to wear an ostomy pouch anyway. Three, in the midline of the abdomen near your umbilicus. Or four, a permanent colostomy is usually located on the left side of the abdomen. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is four. So it's usually placed on that lower end of the descending colon. And the great thing that when it's placed in the lower end of the descending colon, in that area, the patient has more control over the evacuation schedule. They can actually um, um, train their, their uh, bowel, that area, so that it can be evacuated at a certain time or certain times each day. So uh, choice number four is the correct answer choice. The client with the nasal gastric tube inserted at the time of surgery. This tube will most likely be removed when the client demonstrates one, absence of nausea and vomiting, two, passage of mucus from the rectum, three, passage of flatus and feces from the colostomy, or four, absence of stomach drainage for about 24 hours. And the correct answer is three, passage of flatus and uh, feces from the colostomy. So that's what lets us know that that colostomy is ready for function us seeing that passage of the feces and that we're seeing um, flatus, right? That gas, we know that it's open and it's functioning properly. So that's the correct answer choice. Let's look at the wrong choices. One, absence of nausea and vomiting. That does not tell us, it's not um, a criteria to let us know if that NG2 is ready to be removed. Choice number two, passage of mucus from the rectum. How are they gonna have mucus from the rectum? Look at the type of <coughs> excuse me, look at the type of surgery patient just had. Where's this mucus coming from? So no, that's false. And then choice number four, absence of stomach drainage for about 24 hours. That also is not a criteria. It doesn't tell us if that NG2 is ready to be removed. It doesn't tell us if that colostomy is open and functioning properly. So guys, choice number three is the correct answer choice. Which of the following nursing actions would be most appropriate immediately after NG tube removal? One, provide the client with mouth care. Two, auscultate for bowel sounds. Three, palpate for abdominal distension. Or four, give the client some orange sherbet. What do you guys think? And the correct answer is one. You're gonna provide mouth care for the client. Remember this whole time that that patient's been having this gastric decompression, they've had the NG tube in place. Have they had anything by mouth? No. So the first thing you're gonna do is provide mouth care. You're gonna provide mouth care and then you'll give them something to eat. Let's look at the wrong answer choices too. Auscultate for bowel sounds. Um, we do that before removal, not after. Choice number three, palpate for abdominal distension. Again, we do that before removal, not after. And then choice number four, give the uh, client some orange sherbet. That's great. But the first thing you're going to do is provide that mouth care. Then you're going to give that patient something to eat. Okay. Which of the following would be an appropriate expected outcome for the client who has had abdominal peri perineal resection with a colostomy? The client will one, demonstrate an understanding of the need to maintain high fiber diet. Two, verbalize that he feels free to discuss concerns about his sexual functioning. Three, indicate that he understands the need to avoid physical exertion. Or four, limit fluid intake to 1,000 milliliters per day. And the correct answer is two, when they verbalize that they feel free to discuss concerns about his or her sexual functioning. So guys, I want you to think about this. The rectum, the anal sphincter, this has been removed, right? So they may have concerns about 
sexual functioning. So we want to make sure that they feel free to ask questions and um, get information as needed. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, demonstrate an understanding of the need to maintain high fiber diet. That's not necessary. They don't need to be on a high fiber diet. What you have to teach them is to stay away from foods that are prone to cause, you know, odors or um, gas such as, oh my gosh, what's that vegetable called? It's green. It looks like a little um, cabbage, not broccoli sprouts, something sprouts. Broccoli, sp Brussels sprouts. Yes, Brussels sprouts. So you teach them to stay away from things like Brussels sprouts or broccoli. You don't want them to eat foods that can cause a foul odor or like increased gas, right? But there's no need to maintain high fiber diets. So that's incorrect. Three, indicate that he understands the need to avoid a physical exertion. No, that he needs to, he needs to avoid what? Um, um, sports. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I can't speak today. Contact sports. That's what he needs to avoid. He can't can't play basketball or soccer or any type of sport where that area can be injured. But no need for physical exertion. Just avoid contact sports. And um, choice number four: limit fluid intake to a thousand milliliters per day. That's false. Uh, fluids are actually encouraged. They're not going to be restricted. So the correct answer is choice number two. The client indicates that he's ready to learn about his colostomy. Which of the following nursing interventions would most likely be effective in preparing the client to look at the colostomy? One, telling the client how normal body functions will continue. Two, encouraging the client to ask questions about the colostomy. Three, asking a member of the local ostomy club to visit the client. Or four, using illustrative material using teaching sessions with the client. And the correct answer is number four. If you go back to the question, they're asking you how to prepare the client to what? Look at the colostomy. Not to listen to the colostomy, not to touch the colostomy, but to look at the colostomy. So what's your answer going to do? B, give them something visual. Give them an illustrative material. That's something they have to look at, right? Yeah. Give them an illustrative material during the teaching session so they can get used to looking at the colostomy for is the correct answer choice. Choices one, two, and three don't encourage the patient to look at the colostomy, which is what the question is asking. Guys, I'm so sorry, I gotta, I gotta drink some coffee. Just give me a moment. I know I'm still drinking out of a cop, um, Christmas mug, but I love it. Okay, let's keep going. The nurse irrigates the client's colostomy. If the client complains of abdominal cramping after receiving about 150 milliliters of solution during the colostomy irrigation, the nurse should temporarily, one, stop the flow of solution, two, have the client sit up, three, remove the irrigating cone or tube, or four, insert the cone or tube further into the colon. What do you guys think? The correct answer is one you're going to temporarily stop the solution. So what happens is that solution is, it's irritating those um, um, nerve endings, it's irritating the colon, and so that's what's causing that cramping sensation. So temporarily, you're gonna stop that irrigation so that uh, that irritation of the colon will slow down and stop, and then you'll continue because you have to do the irrigation, right? So that's what you're gonna do. Look at number two, have the client sit up. Having that patient sit up, that's not going to stop the irritation of the colon. All they're doing is sitting up while their colon is still being irritated. Choice number three, remove the irrigating cone or tube. Why? We're not done with the irrigation. So if you remove it, by the way, you're going to be, um, ir you're going to be irritating that colon when you remove it. You have to put it back in to continue the irrigation. So that makes no sense. Four, insert the cone or tube further into the colon. It's not the cone or tube that's the problem. It's the solution that is causing the irritation of the colon, right? So even if you push it up higher, it's not going to stop the irritation. What you want to do is temporarily 
stop that irrigation so that it can calm down and then go ahead and continue because you have to finish irrigating the colon. The nurse evaluates the client's stoma during the initial post-op period. Which of the following signs should be reported immediately to the physician? The stoma, one, is slightly damaged, two, dark red to purple, three, oozes a small amount of blood, or four, does not expel stool. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is two, is dark or purple. That stoma being dark or purple, what does that tell you? It tells you that there is decreased circulation to that area. It tells you that there's decreased blood supply. So you're going to have to let the healthcare provider know immediately. Choice number one, slightly edematous. We expect it to be slightly edematous. It's brand new. Three, ooze a small amount of blood. And notice it said small, right? They just had surgery. That is expected. Choice number four, does not expel stool. That is expected. Why? This patient just had this um this procedure we're not expecting that site to expel stool for another two to four days so them not it not expecting stool that's expected what is not expected is that site being dark red to purple that's letting us know that okay there's decreased blood supply and you're going to have to let the healthcare provider know immediately because guess what's happening those the tissue those cells are going to start to die right because it's blood that's supposed to be feeding that area the nurse changes the client's colostomy bag and dressing. Which of the following would be an indication that the client is ready to participate in his care? One, he asks, the, he asks what time the doctor will visit. Two, asks about the supplies used during the dressing change. Three, talks about something he read in the morning. Or four, complains about the way the night nurse changed the dressing. And the correct answer is two. He asks about the supplies used during the dressing change. He's getting involved. He wants to know about his care. That shows readiness, right? Let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, ask what time the doctor is visiting. That's avoiding the, the, the discussion about care of the colostomy and specifically him caring for the colostomy. That's not showing him getting involved. Three, talks about something he read in the newspaper. That also avoids him caring for the colostomy. Four, complaining about the way the night nurse changed the dressing. That also avoids him caring for the colostomy. But choice three, asking about the supplies that are used to take care of his colostomy, that's starting to show a readiness in his care. Okay, he's getting involved. Which of the following uh, skin preparations would be best to apply around the client's colostomy? One, Karaya, two, petroleum, uh, excuse me, two says, I can't even pronounce that word. Potrolatin, I'm saying petroleum, I can't pronounce that word. Three, cornstarch, four, antiseptic cream. I'll give you a hint, it's not two. The correct answer is choice, guys, is one, Karaya. So Karaya and um, stoma adhesive, both are, of those are great barriers for the cream great barriers for the green great barriers for the skin guys they're great barriers for the skin and it decreases that skin um redness and irritation that can happen so uh choice number one is the correct answer because you want to keep that skin that area healthy okay you want to prevent skin breakdown you want to prevent irritation number one is the correct answer choice Choices two, three, and four, none of those protect the skin or decrease irritation, like number Karaya, or like I said, you can use Karaya, you can use stoma adhesive, but the point is you need that protection for the skin and they don't do that, number one does. Which of the following measures would be most effective, which of the following measures would most effectively promote wound healing after a client's perennial drains have been removed? One, taking sits bath. Two, taking daily showers. Three, applying warm moist dressings to the area. Or four, applying a protective heating pad to the area. What do you guys think? And the correct answer is one, sits bath. Okay, think about it with the sits bath. First of all, the sits bath, it's very relaxing. It's very calming to the patient. 
And besides that, um, that warmth promotes what? healing it promotes a uh, circulation to that area and this is bath actually helps clean that area it's a sits bath right so what's the correct answer um like i said out of these choices from the daily showers the moist dressings or even applying a heated pad the sits bath does everything it, keep, it helps clean that area while providing um comfort and relaxation to the patient okay when planning diet teaching for the client with colostomy, the nurse would develop a plan that emphasizes that one, foods containing roughage should be eliminated from the diet. Two, liquids are best limited to prevent diarrhea. Three, clients with colostomies must, exper ex must experiment to determine the balance of food that's best for them. Or four, a high fiber diet will produce a form stool that can be passed with more regularity through colostomy. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer, cho answer choice is three. Clients with colostomies must experience, experiment to determine the balance of food that's best for them. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. So the way your body reacts to certain foods will be different from the way someone else's body reacts. So they're going to have to experiment with different foods to see what works for them. Number three is the correct answer choice. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. One. Containing food, uh, foods containing roughage should be eliminated from the diet. That means completely getting rid of. Remember um, how I told you when you don't know what the answer choice is and you see an all-inclusive, don't choose it, right? It's not even saying some. It's saying getting rid of all of it, and that's just absolutely false. Two, liquids are best limited to prevent diarrhea. No, just because they have a colostomy, we're not going to... Um, uh, decrease liquids. That's number one. And number two, liquids are not going to cause them to have diarrhea. So that's false. And then for a high fiber diet will produce form stool that can be passed more regularly. We do not put these patients on a certain type of diet. They really have to try different foods and see what works for them. So guys, the correct answer choice is number three. And we're down to our last question. Which of the following statements indicates that the client understands the home care of his colostomy? One, I can attach my colostomy pouch directly to my skin as long as it's not irritated. Two, I can anticipate some pain around my stoma when I clean it. Three, I can expect to see some blood in my stool on occasion. Or four, I should be able to establish a regular pattern of elimination with my colostomy. I think I gave you the answer in another question. The correct answer is four. I should be able to establish a regular pattern of elimination with my colostomy. Many colostomies, again, especially the ones that are placed in that, um, the descending colon, they can actually train to uh, evacuate regularly for the correct answer choice. Look at one. I can attach my col colostomy pouch directly to my skin. No, you need a barrier every single time choice number two i can anticipate some pain around my stoma when i clean it no there should no there should be no pain and if you experience pain you need to call your healthcare provider choice three i can expect to see some blood in my stool on occasion absolutely not now immediately post-op there may be a little bit of blood right but if it's been established you shouldn't be seeing any blood and if you do see blood you need to contact your healthcare provider so the correct answer choice guys is number four and that is it for this video for the patient with colostomy i hope this video was helpful and I really clarified it for you, the nursing care for the patient with colostomy. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Um, I have another video coming on uh, care of the patient with a lower GI dysfunction because I think I have two videos on upper, but I haven't done anything on lower. So that is coming soon. But please let me know in the comment section what you'd like to see me cover next. Let me know what you thought about this video. Don't forget, I'm now doing reviews for NCLEX. Booking is available on my website and they're filling up fast. So be sure to check it out. NexusNursingInstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching. You guys catch me on the next video.